So I want to like can, can you let's start with your name the proper pronunciation please <laughs> My name is Jan de Brand it's uh, Jan and in Nepali uh, 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 yeah for us ah. it's called here a G yeah? ah. but uh, if you say Jan de Brand that's a women for in Belgium Oh Jan is the the female of Jan uh, oh. so I prefer Jan. <laughs> Jan. Yeah. I'm going to call you coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the players call me always guru. guru. So <laughs> I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah. I like I used to play cricket when I was young. I'm still young but younger than this. <laughs> so I, I my language was coach all the time. Yeah. So yeah. even while I was looking after any cricket team, so I I always just uh, address them as coach, be it Nepal or foreign coach. I always say them, but it's easy to say the call them coach. Mm. You've been here for a while now in Nepal. Yeah. Oh, so two months and twenty days. Yeah. This one is uh, for for the team for the coaching. But before that, also you've already been here in Nepal as a tourist. Yes, I've been here in two thousand and ten. Wow. Uh, I was almost one month here. Uh, made the Manaslu trekking. Wow. Some days in Kathmandu and then 18, 20 days of walking uh, around the Manaslu. It was an amazing experience, a wonderful, maybe one of the most beautiful uh, travels that I did in, in my life. That trek is, you said 15 days, right? The whole trek? Uh, eight, actually 18 eight. days. Yeah. 18 days oh. we, we were going around the Manaslu. And oh, at a certain moment we were in Shamdo. It's at 4,000... 400 meter, and it started to snow in the night and was 30 centimeters of snow. So the next day it was a problem because you have to go over the Larkia Pass. Mm. And I, uh, we didn't want to go back in the tour. Huh? So it's a tour going around. And so we had to wait one more day in Shamdo. Uh, lucky the weather changed again, mm. became sunny. And so the next day we, we could take the pass and do our normal circuit. And the last three days, you join the trekkers of the Annapurna circuit. And uh, so it was a beautiful, beautiful trek. I once met a tourist in Pokhara. She entered from uh, Kashmir, India. Mm -hmm. And she trekked her way all the way to uh, Manang. Manang or Mustang it was. So, mm -hmm. And then from there, she came to Pokhara. Mm, so, wow. <laughs> that's it's amazing. A, it's an amazing trek. Yeah, it's, uh, actually, it's my second passion to walk in the mountains. Uh, when I was younger, my brother and me, we, we went a lot in the mountains. I was on the Mount Kilimanjaro in 2002. And then, uh, and in Europe, in Switzerland, Austria, we, we were a lot in the mountains. You want to climb one? Uh, actually, not with all the alpine material that means uh, the, the gears irons and the gears no no i just i just love to walk ah. and to enjoy the nature to for me there are three three aspects in in uh, when i am hiking the first of all is that um, i enjoy the nature and the panorama you have the view you have when you are uh, high in the mountains is amazing the second, it is a physical effort. And you, you climb and uh, I love physical effort. I am a physical education teacher. So all my life I was busy with uh, physical education. So I love, I love that. And the third one is the, the silence. I, I cannot find the same thing when I'm going in the sea or in the city. Uh, but in the mountains, there is the silence. You know, hear the birds. You know, and I enjoy this so much. It's fun, Nepal. I was talking to, I think, uh, there's this player from Lebanon. He play, he's playing football for one of the clubs here, uh, Mohammed Taha. So we were talking and I remember telling him that uh, one of my brothers, he's a YouTuber. He, he, he travels a lot. He's a vlogger. Mm -hmm. So he told me once and that really struck me. And he said like, Nepal is a country that if you start traveling, it's going to take you more than 10 years to complete everything. <laughs> yeah, Sure. Uh, we did just the, the Manaslu trekking. There are so many circuits here. I would love to go to Dolpo. I would love to go to Mustang, the Annapurna circuit. 
Actually, my son is coming uh, with his wife in the end of October, and he will do the Annapurna circuit. Wow. I would love to join, but my leg is not so good anymore, so um, I have to pass for that. But yeah, Nepal is, is a wonderful place to for hiking. Uh, didn't speak about the, the Everest and, 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 uh, and to go to ba Everest Base Camp. But um, yeah, for sure. You you have the Himalaya, and this is yeah. uh, so so amazing. Uh, the best thing about Nepal is uh, we're such a small country, but we've the Himalayas on the top, and there's the hills, and then we have the flat regions as well. So the geographically, we I think we're the, we're one very gifted country. Absolutely. Yeah. So the south with the border with India is so flat and so hot. Also, you've been there to Tarai? But, uh, no, I have not been there. But I am a mountain man, so give me give me the part of the Himalaya. <laughs> In this time of the year, it's going it it rises more than forty five degrees Celsius, forty forty five. Mm, so it's like so very it's hot. too hot for me. Yeah, no, I I prefer more the I like the sun, but I prefer more the the colder regions and. The nature is so different when, when it's a little bit colder and when it's raining or snowing. The nature is totally different. Also, when I was doing research about you, uh, my fellow journalist friends, they're all talking very high about you. Like uh, you, uh, Before you shifted to this hotel, uh, you walked to, from Naksal to Tamil every day to have your coffee. So tell us about that. That's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a morning person, so I like uh, to get up when the sun rises. And so then um, I'm used to that in, in Belgium too. I wake up early and then my wife is sleeping a little bit longer till nine o'clock. But then it's my time from six to nine. I can do what I want. Uh, I can read, I can listen to music, I can make a little walk in the nature. So I decided, okay, let's let's. Uh, but I'm going to Tamil for uh, for a special reason because um, I was looking back uh, in which hotel I was staying uh, 12 years ago, and I didn't know the name and like this. So I had to find the the hotel, and it was Marshangdi uh -huh. Marshangdi Hotel, and finally I found it in in Tamil, and that was nice. The hotel changed a little bit. And so sometimes I I just took my breakfast there because it it remembers me my nice trek here from 12 years ago. Mm. Okay, to recollect those memories. Mm -hmm. uh, you said like uh, you talked about music. What kind of music are you into? Oh, I like all kind of of music and world music, because my brother was really a, a music freak and. Uh, uh, every time when I went abroad to coach, he gave me 10 new CDs, 10 new books. Uh, I should read them because he was coming, uh, after two months, he was coming to visit me. And he brought new 10 CDs and <laughs> new uh, uh, 10 books. And uh, I had to finish them by, by that time. And uh, he was a world music lover. So now I introduced it every time in my meeting, with the Nepalese girls, I, I put some music of Europe, oh. but they don't know so much about uh, mm. about even even the big stars like uh, Queen and Tina. Unless recently Tina Turner died, I put music of Tina Turner, and they didn't know about her. They say you are an alphabet. You are only listening to Nepali music or music from India. You should discover the European music and, and not only European, but American music is is so rich and so beautiful. Absolutely. I'm also, I, I used to play drums when I was in college. I had mm -hmm. a band, we used to play hard rock and metal sometimes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so that, that was sometimes, because you know, uh, the underground metal scene mm -hmm. in Nepal, it's very rich. Mm -hmm. It has a rich history. Mm -hmm. And one of our bands, it's called the Underside. Uh, so they travel around Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. they tra I think they played in the Reading Festival or Download Festival. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Uh, since also, since uh, the hippies were here in mm -hmm. the 70s, since marijuana was legalized at that time, Nepalis, we got a lot of uh, good. Uh, we have people of older age who have good taste in music. 
So the rock and roll and the metal that comes from that time. So yeah. have you been to Tamil in the evening? No, I don't go so out so much in the evening. You know, um, I'm 64 now, and I am awake from 5:30. So mm -hmm. by nine o'clock in the evening, the light is going out. Okay. <laughs> I'm working hard in, during the day. And then uh, nine o'clock, I just listen some music. And 9.30, I fall asleep. Otherwise, I cannot, you cannot hold the rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are having also a nightlife, then, <laughs> then it will be quickly finished with me. <laughs> so no, I prefer, I prefer the daylight. I, that's why I, I want to see the sun coming up and I want to see the sun going down. And then my day is almost over. <laughs> okay, I ask you this because uh, there's a uh, rock bar in Hamel. It's called the Purple Haze. And it's the best rock bar in Nepal. And the bands that play there, they cover all the songs of foreign artists. They play Nepali as well. And that is one of a must-go place. So next Absolutely. time you're there, kindly. I am, I am educated with the purple, ah. you know. And this is, the, what's the name? Purple, you said? Purple Haze. Purple Haze. So the purple was a fantastic band oh, in, in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in my time. So yeah, Metallica, we had the Rolling Stones, uh, then Bob Softer Dylan. Music. Uh, with the the Beatles, but also the Bee Gees and like this. It was, uh, there is so so much nice music in. Europe. They play all those coach there. Yeah. They since it's a rock band, they play all the classic ones. Mm -hmm. So last time I was there, uh, they were playing. Suddenly they started playing a lot of tracks of Metallica. Mm -hmm. So my favorite band all time is Metallica. So I was like headbanging in front of the stage. So. And the, the last uh, time in the meeting, I put uh, ACDC, mm. uh, high, Highway to yeah. Hell. I said, uh, it has to be a highway to hell for Uzbekistan. Mm. <laughs> 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 they listen to music, but not so much uh, reaction. <laughs> Uh, I am only the one, the only one who get high with this music. And they, they were sitting, okay, very quiet. And I told them, listen, this music is, is to open the doors and to to bang and, and to, to hit them very hard. But uh, uh, yeah, if you don't know this music, then it's, it's, it's different, of course. Music also introduces you to different cultures. Absolutely. Yeah. And gives you um, a good vocabulary. Everywhere where I worked, the, um, the best way for me to teach and to learn the language was by music. Wow. So I learned songs and then I understood the meaning of the song. So when I was in Turkey, for example, I listened a lot to Turkish music and Turkish have great music. Uh, a little bit nostalgic, dramatic, but very beautiful music. Yeah. Music and volleyball hand in hand. 40 Absolutely. years long journey just for volleyball. For me, volleyball is, is art. And I'm actually busy with writing a book about volleyball. Yeah, wow. Volleyball between art and heart. Wow. Because sports is emotion, but also it needs a lot of training to become an art. Uh, when you, it's not coming by itself. Mm. Uh, to become a good volleyball player is 95% transpiration. And then it's coming, okay, the, the talent uh, that, you, that you have. But it's first of all hard work. And hard work brings art. Um, one time Pablo Picasso, he's a famous Spanish painter, said, uh, you know, when I was young, I tried to copy all the big artists from before, Rembrandt, Rubens, and all those I tried to copy and I suffered so much because it's not too easy. It's not so easy to make a wonderful copy of, uh, of those painters, the colors, the way, the shadow and the light. So, um, so it's, a, it, it's really difficult. And afterwards, you can say, okay, I, I am a creator of art. But first of all, you have to go through all the stage of hard work. And then, uh, then it seems like, oh, He's inventing something, he's doing something new, but this is the fruit of, of many, many years of, of, for me, many, many years of volleyball. The beauty about people in sports is that the dedication uh, people show, it's like you've been there for 40 years already, four decades as a player, as a coach, right? If I'm not wrong, 40 years? 
Uh, actually, 56 years. Wow. I started to play volleyball when I, when I was eight years. Okay. And from that day, uh, this sport never left me. So it stayed a passion all my life. And I think what you said is, is the truth, the dedication. It's about passion. Uh, a player without passion will never reach the, the high level. This is maybe the most important thing in sports to be passionate about your sport. Wow. 56 years. <laughs> so already a lifetime. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And I'm fortunate. Okay, I grew up in Belgium. My father founded a volleyball club when I was eight. And uh, we immediately, okay, started to play for this club. I made this club. Uh, we became... After so many years, we became champion. And uh, so my father was more than 50 years president of this club. So I grew up in really a volleyball family. Mm -hmm. My mother was helping in the cafeteria. Wow. And at least my brother was a very good player and, and coach. So yeah, we, we ate volleyball day by day. And then I was very interested in the world. Uh, when I joined the national team, I started to, to go abroad a lot and I was always interested in, in culture and history of the places where I went and then to make contact with players and to make, because that's maybe the most beautiful of sports, it's to make friends all over your life, uh, friends everywhere in the world. When I say, okay, I have to go to Spain, I have a friend there, I can sleep at his, at his house and... Uh, can have a great time together. And that's maybe one sport brings cultures together and friendships uh, are un unpayable. True. You know, there's this movie called uh, Lord of the Rings, the mm -hmm. book, the movie. So they uh, have this song uh, when the, I think it's from The Hobbit, when it finishes, it's called The Last Goodbye. Mm -hmm. And there's a line, uh, it says, many places I have been, many sorrows I have seen, but I won't regret and I won't forget for those who took the road with me. And since being a commentator, a freelancer, I travel to places and every time there's, there'll be a new television crew with me that comes around. Uh, sometimes I work with them. I, I get to see them. You might feel this as well. You, you experience their life, their culture, and suddenly you are part ways. So those lines always relate me to that. And knowing people, knowing new places, new culture is another... Uh, I think that's the gift that uh, our work gives to us, getting to travel a lot. Yeah, and, and also uh, you work together to a certain goal. Huh? We work together to, to win this Kava Cup or we are, we'll go to the Asian Games to make a good performance there. And that means that you now we were working two and a half months. Even without reaching the top, because to reach the top, the gold medal is not so easy because you have concurrence and like this. But it's the road you travel together that's more important than actually the main goal to obtain the gold or the silver or the bronze. Of course you want to win. I always want to win the gold or the silver or a bronze medal. But sometimes it's not, it's not possible because you have stronger teams and uh, you have also in your team your limits. Uh, but to make this road together, that's that's really nice. So how do you find uh, the Nepali uh, women's basketball team? Sorry, I'm so, I'll ask this again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. For <laughs> Audience would have killed me. <laughs> so, so how do you find uh, the women's volleyball team? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the girls are... are very disciplined, uh, very enjoyable also to, to train. I was uh, really surprised that every time I'm coming to the training, it's a big smile, hey guru, hey guru, and namaste. They have always something to, to give to me, then it's fruit, then it's a chocolate, then it's wow. uh, some grapes. So on my, on my side, I give something back in return. But it was like every day. Uh, in other teams, you have, they have a bad face because the day before something happened and they come with a bad face on training. I never saw it here. And that's really remarkable. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's a characteristic of, of Nepali people. Oh. They are born with smiles on the face. Mm. They are looking really happy. Even if the situation in this country is not, not very... It's hard, like the, the life is hard here. But still they are very friendly and very kind. And that's, I feel this respect as a coach from the first day and that's, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, I haven't been to, I hadn't been to any volleyball matches. So the time we played our second game, I think it was the first game. Uh, so I was there uh, in the group stage and the game just took me by itself because uh, I was sitting with my friend, one journalist friend and he, I, I was there. I told him, explain me this game, explain me the rules because See, since being a commentator, I would love to explore new dimensions. If I get to know the rules now, once I get to know it there, I'm going to wa go home and watch it on the telly. Mm -hmm. And from that time, I'm going to learn the sports. I'm going to learn the rules. And once I've done that, I'll try to give it a shot in the commentary. Mm -hmm. right? So I really want to do that. So And what I, what I saw was, I, from a very layman term, volley uh, volleyball is a game of momentum, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, for sure it's a game of momentum. Um, but it's a very interesting game because every point has its value. Uh, you win always a point. Before in my time, it was not like this. You had to make the service and only with the service you could obtain points. Mm -hmm. Now with this tie-break system, every point you play is going to be important. And in volleyball, it's very okay. In this sense, uh, as quick as possible, you have to put an opponent in a distance of three, four points. Mm -hmm. There you make a gap. And then you have like a, a moment of, okay, now it is a little bit quiet. But as long as you cannot make this gap, it stays close, 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 close. But once you have a gap, and that's the momentum that you build in, okay, now we attack and we make this gap, then it's becoming, okay, a game of control more and not to lose any stupid points and you can control till the end. But uh, women volleyball especially is more <laughs> a game of ups and downs than in men volleyball. When in men volleyball they make a gap, it's practically impossible to come back in the set. Mm. In women, I saw I'm coaching more than 20 years women teams now. There is, is more a change and more ups and downs. And even when you are leading by five points, you are never sure uh, that, that you are going to win that set. Uh, so you have to be careful with, with women and not to cry victory too early. <laughs> yeah. I missed the match, uh, the one against India, mm -hmm. but I watched uh, the remaining games. I think the first game we played was with Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan. yes. Yeah, it was an easy, easy, pretty easy game. Easy. Also the second against Bangladesh. Bangladesh was is a weak team. And then were three three nice games. Uh, against India, we played really three sets at a high level. And uh, we could uh, we could make a two two. Um, but okay, unfortunately. India India proved also that they were the strongest team of the tournament. They won the final against Kazakhstan three zero. And it's a very nice physical team. Uh, taller players, uh, powerful attack, very good setter. And so, and we played really remarkable against them. Three sets of high level. Also against Kazakhstan. Yes. The first three sets were really good. Unfortunately, we lost the first set uh, by 28-30. And if we had won this set, I think we could have won this game. But uh, Kazakhstan was the fourth and the fifth set. They were impressive in, in block and we couldn't find any solutions anymore in, in attack. But um, those are the games you are working for. You are working two and a half months not to play against Bangladesh or Maldives because that's, that's not a game, but to play India, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. And those are the games we, we are working for. Uh, we talked about the semi-final, uh, Kazakhstan, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I was there because I'm very confused between Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. So, uh, <laughs> please don't mind me about that. So, Kazakhstan, that was a really strong team. And the characters our players showed in that game. 
So I was really, so I was really enjoying the whole thing, taking the atmosphere in, people shouting all around, and the way we fought, uh, we took it uh, to the uh, tiebreaker. It's just one thing that we couldn't get two back-to-back points that would give us the set. And after that, the next two set we won. And I think somewhere in that first set, they got a bit of um, fatigue. I think maybe. In the first set, oh, in the first set, there was no fatigue. Uh, maybe in the fourth and the fifth set, you could speak about a, a little bit to getting tired, but not in the first set. And uh, the first set, we we lost twenty eight thirty. Then we played two really good sets. But then the coach of of uh, Kazakhstan also changed his his lineup and made a stronger team in block, and that worked efficiently against us. And I told you already before, we we were not able to make the, enough variation in attack to to go over or to go next to to this block. So uh, let's go a little bit back Bef- uh, before when you arrived here, uh, and after you took charge uh, till today, what uh, changes uh, have you uh, given to the team? First of all, okay, they have to get used to my practices. What I want for practice, uh, what the intensity of practice. Um, it's not a free practice, let's say. I ask certain goals in every training. You have to arrive to do this. You have to do this well. When it's not good, I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get angry on not on players, but because you are not doing well the exercise like I want. So this was the first, okay, to get used, what kind of training I'm giving, and to use to, to get used to the intensity. And the second thing I implemented is a very good organization, a very good organization in block defense, a very good organization in to play the side out, that is from reception, setting, and attack. And that it's structure organized and they had to follow it. And it's not easy for Nepali people who are born and, and to play like they are thinking, like free, because they had never coaches who were on that part, very strict, to say, no, you have to do it like this. You have to stay there. This is your position and you are not going to change anything. So this is what, uh, what they had to learn and it took, it took almost two months and then we see the fruit now of this work. We are a very good defense team. We are not giving up in uh, when the other team attacking the ball is never touching the floor directly. There is always a hand, somebody is touching the ball. And uh, when we attack, there is always a good cover of the attack. And uh, that's a characteristic of a, of a good team. Uh, the, the few mistakes on the technical side and a very well organized team on the tactical side. Uh, especially in the uh, particular semi-final game, we lost a few points uh, because of our own mistake as well. So you might have noted it down to correct those kind of those mistakes because uh, playing, uh, practicing is one thing, but when you play a game on the, in front of a crowd, it's a there's something is at stake. It's a semi-final, so you also need to now adapt to that, right? Yeah, there is absolutely a, men, a mental aspect in, in high-level sports. And the higher you go, it's becoming more and more a, a mental game. Mm-hmm. And because um, uh, I just read from Djokovic, the tennis player, his last thing he said, in the world, the first 200 in top-ranking tennis players, they all, all have nice backhands, nice forehands. They are fast, they are physically well-prepared. So what's the difference? The difference is in the head, okay? To stay cool when it's going a little bit bad and not to overreact when it's going good. And this is also something that you have to learn. eh? I said always to the girls also, okay, uh, don't overreact. Don't be too much euphoric if you win a point, okay? No, just be busy with the next point. eh? You come together and be busy with the next point. Because that's the secret. How can you win the next point? Uh, It's by serving there. It's by a good block and defense organization to play a counterattack and and like that. 
that's volleyball talk and that you have to implement in the in the training and the more they do in the training uh, the better they are also going to do in in the game but let's talk about volleyball not about the mark of shoes or the color of the shoes during the training mm -hmm. we talk about the next ball how we play the next ball and um that's uh, something also you is from culture to culture is is different and that's maybe the most difficult thing in the beginning because also i have here very young players not experienced mm. uh, some of them were five or six players played for the first time uh, for the national team mm. so they are impressed of course by the crowd by the public eh? or when somebody is shouting against you or like this they are always a little bit impressed but this is what you have to to eliminate sure. you are not busy with the public you are just okay what is my task what i have to do for the the next point i really i was really impressed by our libro Salina, 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 Salina is is very little, very yeah. small, but very fast wow. and reading the game very well. Our reflexes and, are amazing. Uh, and good reflexes, good defense, also taking over the sets, uh, very nice. Yeah, she she deserved uh, to have this this prize of best libero. She's quick as well. I saw. I was like. Uh, out of all uh, those players, so many of them, they've won the National Players Award as well. But my eyes were stuck on her, the way she was positioning. So for me, as a new guy, Libro is someone who needs to understand the game and uh, be at the right place. Yeah. Just to not let the ball drop. So she was doing it with really yeah. perfection. The role of the Libro is becoming very important in, in modern volleyball. Mm. If you have a nice Libro, she is organizing the receiving, the reception, she's organizing the defense, she's taking a lot of, of balls. Um, it's very important in a team. So, uh, from volleyball, uh, I'm gonna, I would really want to invite her to this podcast of mine because I think uh, people need to know about her. Mm -hmm. Because just like in a band, uh, the drummer always uh, doesn't get the credit, right? <laughs> the bassist and the drummers are the people least uh, famous out of the total, all. So, uh, as a Libra, it's, it's, it has a very important role. Yeah, so, uh, yeah it's uh, because uh, the setters and the Liberos cannot score points. And just uh, the setter can score points with the service, some attacks, but for the rest, they are givers to yeah. the team. And uh, you cannot have only takers in, in, in your team, otherwise it will be quickly finished. You need givers and deliverers, and uh, the Liberos and the setters are are a special race in, in this in this game. They're like defensive midfielders of a football team. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. must follow football as well. And uh, Setter is the, the head of the, is the motor of the team. She has to think uh, how I organize the attack, who I play, at what moment I play. It's not an easy task. So a Setter actually is good from the years 28 to 35 are the best ages of a setter. All what you had, are doing before and if you win, it's very good. But for me, a, a setter is becoming really secure of herself, really confident after 28. So, Aruna is time. <laughs> so, uh, now we're done with this. Uh, you, you, we've won uh, the uh, third, right, third position. So you brought the medal. Can we see the medal once? Pritam, the jacket actually pass kar de It's in my jacket. No, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I really want to see that. Okay, this is the medal. <laughs> uh, can you see? Yes. So, milo on board samay? Ella, ali mo milay. So, so this is the medal. Wow. This was. So, you know, there's a quick fact uh, about our uh, football, uh, sorry, volleyball. <laughs> I was trying to say national sports, I, it came out as football. So, before volleyball was uh, declared as our national game, we used to say, Don Nibio, you know? There's a game called Don Nibio. So, you have a small bat and a small uh, wooden piece. So, you bounce it and strike it. So, it was unofficially our official game. 
it was never declared but one thing i everybody we need to thank uh, our government is that they officially announced volleyball as a national game now i went into some research why it's being uh, well, it's established as the national game so i came to know that it's very economical to play and volleyball is very famous especially uh, in the villages locally let's say locally and you don't require any uh, lot of equipments right so a ball volleyball. a net, net a court and i think what is the most you know, important is it's a non contact sport exactly you have to work yourself in the team to put the ball over in one two or three contacts sure. and then to put the ball down on the other side yeah? and the others they try to evitate that the ball is coming and this makes this makes it fun in the sense also and that's why it's so popular for women and girls to play this sport because there is not a direct contact and uh, i think it's one of the most beautiful team sports for for women mm. that's why uh, it's so popular all over the world volleyball is the most popular sport all over the world mm -hmm. um, because you have beach volleyball you have uh, uh, for example in brazil a lot of people are playing beach volleyball mm. so um, and here by wonder i was going on the manas loose circuit and we arrived in the fourth day in a village of 2500 meters and i opened my eyes and i saw a volleyball court in the middle of the jungle wow. uh, and they were playing volleyball and i was like incognito in my group i was a physical education teacher because i made this travel i i wanted to be a little bit to get rid of the of the world Work. Uh, yeah. And uh, and they were teasing me, the Belgian travelers. They were teasing me. Why are you, uh, Jan? Uh, uh, you can play some volleyball. You are a physical education teacher. Of course, I say I try. I try. <laughs> and then they saw me. Uh, mm, he's not bad. Wow, <laughs> he can do this. Uh, so um, then they looked up on Google and they they found that I was. Uh, they were surprised. They were surprised that. Uh, more than 350 selections with the national team so they they looked oh you are <laughs> why are you not telling us i said because i i don't i didn't want uh, i didn't want this uh, uh, because i wanted to make just a travel and and and, uh, and to be quiet and not to ask many questions about volleyball so uh, you'll be returning back home today Tonight, yes. Tonight, right. Yeah. So you'll be coming back after three months? No, no. I will be back 15 July. Okay. And then I start to work again for three months and we prepare for the Asian Games in September in China. That's big. Yeah. And it's uh, also for a European, it's special to participate at the Asian Games. Uh, you can only do it as a coach and I think I am one of the few coaches in especially in, in Belgium who will participate at the, at the Asian Games so I'm looking really looking forward to it and uh, I hope we can make a good preparation we can do again three months so that's a, a really nice program we should invite some opponents because this maybe is the the biggest difficulty in Nepal is you cannot invite teams mm -hmm before a big tournament to play some friendly games okay. and to test yourself against also the other teams and then uh, because we we have to admit there is a lack of money mm. to to organize this but for the asian games i think it's supported by olympic committee and i think we were we will be able to um, to invite some good teams and, and to play some nice friendly games and that will help us for playing better at the Asian Games. The more the practice, the better the result. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> Not always. It depends how you practice. Oh. You can practice a lot, but if it is not a good practice, you have no transfer to the game. But if you make uh, good practices connected, how, how is the game? Then, for of course, uh, practice. good practice brings good games. So you prefer in quality more than quantity? 
quality is more important than, than quantity. And you need quantity in the beginning of your program. You mm. need a lot of hours to repeat certain drills, to have many contacts, to do a lot of physical work also. That's hours you have to make. Towards when you are going closer to a big championship, it's more about quality. Quality of every contact in the ball, mm. that's the most important. Uh, in our team, uh, we're getting late, yes, coach. We, I, I'm looking at the clock. So uh, we'll just uh, wrap it up in the next 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you can reach to your team uh, for your last lunch here in Nepal on time. I'm going to make sure about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I wish we had more time. We could talk. So we're going to wrap it up in 10 minutes because you came here from your... You had a busy schedule. You were sick last night as well. You texted me. So uh, I'll thank you about that in the end. So let me <laughs> finish mm -hmm. it. How technically sound did you see this women's volleyball team? I think, okay, it was not so bad uh, technically, but um, they had to improve, for example, in bout setting the height of the set, to push more with the legs, uh, to, to keep the hands better together. In the attack, to have more than one solution in the attack, to go more in the line, to go more diagonal, to have a tip, to have a roll shot. There are so many aspects to train technically in, in volleyball uh, that uh, that you need you need a lot of time. And then the second aspect is the teamwork. Eh? The more you are practicing with uh, your your team, the more automatism are coming in the team. And everybody knows his place on the court and knows their responsibilities. And that's also a lot of time to, to invest. So volleyball is not only physical sport, it's a lot of technique uh, to, to make every contact with the ball better and a lot, a lot of tactical work. And when you play an op against an open, it's about strategy. Strategy and at the end, of course, it's, it's also a mental game. Mm. It's tough, and especially a women's team since they played here in Nepal. It's home. There's always the benefit of home ground advantage. Now they're going to China. Means it's not their fortress anymore. Yeah, but that means there's also less stress uh, in front of your own public. It can work in two ways. Mm. Uh, when you play good, all the people are shouting for you, are helping you. But if you are not playing good, it works. It works also in the opposite way. They are disappointed, the fans, and then they shout also on the players and how to do it better. And the players feel more more stress. So it's not always an advantage to to play at home. Most of the times, yes, uh, because you are used. We train, for example, one and a half month in this gym, so you know this gym so good. Mm -hmm that uh, this is an advantage. Eh? Um, but to play abroad gives no stress, okay? Nobody is expecting mm -hmm. any big performance maybe, and then they can play more free, and uh, sometimes you play better than them. Okay, so we got a new aspect here. So uh, let's not continue this long. I wanted to chat more, but there's always a next time. Mm -hmm, absolutely, so I'm when, coming back. I wanted to ask you, do you drink beer, alcohol, any? Sometimes, very rarely, very rarely. Um, I never drink alcohol in my life yeah. so, so much. Uh, I love to drink once a beer or, or, uh, or a glass of wine when I'm in company with my friends. Mm. But... Uh, it's like a drug or like a, a cigarette. If you never use it, you can never get addicted to it. True. So, and I am a guy of, uh, I think, I like to control myself. I like to control the play as a coach, but also I like to be in control all the time. And then I don't let me go in alcohol. <laughs> True. Uh, to be a good coach, you need to be a good person as well. So you have to, uh, in order to teach discipline, you first you have to stay in discipline. Yeah, you are also a role model. Uh, a coach is a role model for the players. Uh, if they see their coach uh, smoking and drinking, the players also uh, 
say, okay, he's not so such a good sportsman maybe. But you should make the difference. You are the coach and they are the players. But when you are living also like a sportsman as a coach, it's much easier for the girls to accept mm-hmm. and also for me to explain mm-hmm. what is the benefit of a healthy life. Uh, and let's say, okay, I am not only a volleyball coach for the girls. Uh, mm-hmm. I am now 64. I am also a life coach for them. Mm-hmm. All the mistakes that I made in my youth, okay, I can uh, tell them, <laughs> listen, don't do that <laughs> and because uh, it's not going to help you. I can give you the right values already. What is more important in the team, what is more important for you. So listen to these old men, okay, you can listen. You don't have to do it, but okay, maybe you hear it and you you take it with you. Um, but it's up to them to to make their lives. Uh, the only thing is you can you can give some advice how to not only to play good volleyball but also how to live. Be a better human being. I think that's the most important. How do you want to remember it in your life when when you die? Uh, it's not uh, he won like this seven gold medal, medals but he was a son of a bitch. I want to remember it as a good person. Wonderfully said. On that note, uh, let's uh, end this session. So when you're back next time, we'll take time uh, and we'll talk again. We'll continue from here. Not taking much of a time. would like to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, because in s- you have, don't have much time today. You have to farewell the team as well. You have to pack. Yeah, you might have something to work out with. So let's just close it down for today. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Coach. Right, thank you very much. It's a lot. Okay. And never say basketball again. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cut that part. We, I'm keep on it. <laughs> so any, any messages to the fans uh, watching this podcast? Um, just support the, the, the Nepali, the Nepali uh, national teams, uh, men and... and um, women volleyball national teams. Um, to be behind the team and to support the team is so important uh, for, for the players. And uh, I think uh, the players always fight for, not only to play well, but fight for a country. And they fight for Nepal. And never let down your, your national team. Uh, try to always to come back, even if they sometimes play bad or they play against a stronger opponent. Don't let them down and and be supportive for Nepal. Thank you so much, Coach. Okay. I wish you have a wonderful flight back home. Thank you. And really hope you'll bring some Belgian chocolates when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> and some Belgian beers. I I think oh, you love beer I too. I <laughs> love I love Belgian beers. Okay. We'll talk about that when you come I next will, time. I will bring them for sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.